it's different than anything that I've ever done before. I mean, they're a different kind of sick. One minute they're okay, you know, stable, and the next minute that they're not. They're desetting, their oxygen saturation levels are low. So it, it's different in that aspect for me. They're very demanding. It's very time consuming to take care of a COVID-19 patient because you have to remember to gown up, put on the proper PPE to keep you safe, to keep your coworkers safe. Um, and they take a lot of attention. It takes time to gown up and get prepared to go in. Um, for the ER perspective, you know, we do that hundreds of times a day, it seems like. Um, and you just, it's from one patient to the next. Um, we, they're just very, very sick and it's hard for us to, to handle some of it sometimes. Um, but we, you know, you may have a severe COVID patient in one room and then next to them may be a heart attack. And so you have to, you know, degown and just run to the next room. And, and it, it's just very difficult a lot of times. Yeah, I think that's the hardest part is taking care of not just COVID patients, but other patients as well. And trying to make sure that you don't contam cross contaminate and make sure you put on all your gear to go in the one room and then come out wash off the cleanse and then go to your next, like maybe your post-op patient or, you know, like she said, your heart attack or something else. You know, we face the similar challenges. Having to gown up and going into each and every patient's room is very time consuming. So even when you have recognized that there is a patient emergency, you still have to take time to gown up and put on the PPE to keep you safe so you don't take it home to your family, you don't spread it to your coworkers. Um, so there's a lot of challenges that we face with COVID-19 patients. And I, I'm sure that it, it's probably very overwhelming um, to, to face that trying to take care of one type of patient versus a COVID patient. And how much time do you feel you're spending with a COVID patient at a time? I would say it depends on the severity. Some of them, obviously, they're not too sick obviously they're sick enough to be here in the hospital but they're not on the severe spectrum of having to be intubated so it depends on their severity if you have a a patient that's deteriorating which means they're not able to breathe on their own their oxygen levels are very low their respirations are very high to the point where you start to see it in their vital signs then it's time to intubate them and if you have to intubate them and get them stable it can be a two-hour process literally and I know you guys try to provide opportunities to FaceTime or mm -hmm. call mm -hmm. or, or those type of things, but I, I'm sure it's very it's hard. It's not the same because those patients, all they see are the nurses and the staff in all the PPE. They're not getting that human touch. There's no hugging. There's no, you know, there's not any, not any of that. So, you know, the patients that are able to talk on the phone um, do, and then those that don't, the, the nurses and the physicians and the providers have to be that voice to the family. And when you're used to having patients that stay maybe three, four days versus five or six weeks, I mean, that really puts a strain on resources. Can you talk a little bit about that? I think that's where the biggest mental aspect comes into it because we have them longer and we see them where they're not quite as sick to the point where they get even sicker. You see them decline and you've gotten attached to them and you know their family and you know their stories and you know their pets names um, and then when you have to make that decision of are we going to intubate them or not that is very emotional and then unfortunately we have had situations where we've had to come together as a team include the family and decide when it's best to withdraw care and you have to be there to be that patient's advocate you have to also be there for their family um, and so it is very mentally draining. I think one of the, the hardest things that I've seen, probably the hardest thing is, I know two separate times I've seen patients on their cell phones talking to their family right before they're gonna be intubated. And one of those those families don't know is that the last time they're going to get to speak to them or not and you know when you're the the caregivers watching that happen 
I mean, we've never experienced things like that before, and it's sad. And you can see it on our staff's faces. Um, people are just sad. They are tired, and they have worked a lot and very, very hard, but it's just a very sad environment right now. Because you're used to caring for patients, treating them, helping them get better. Absolutely. And, and yes. you're not and seeing that. That's right, and we're not seeing that. It's a um, hopeless feeling, I think. Yes. To try yes. your very best yeah. and you do the things that we normally do to see people get well and you're doing your best and nothing you're doing seems to be helping some of these people. They just continue to decline until we send them off of our floor down to CCU and then, but it's a very helpless feeling. Yes, it is. And our morgue in this hospital has two places for patients to go. We have had days where we have not had enough spots to put patients that need to go to the morgue. That's a scary thing for us because that's not that's not something that we're used to here. I know the answer because I see the statistics every day. I don't see the faces, but I see the statistics every day. And it, it's so much worse, it seems, now than it was last year. Um, and we've seen just in the past month a significant number of patients that have died in comparison mm -hmm. to what we saw yes. last year over the span. So could you talk a little bit about that? I, I don't know the why behind it. I don't know if it's because of large gatherings and you know people were tired of not not being able to go and do things like we always have and you know, school starting back and people want their their lives to be normal and they want to be able to do those things. And, you know, the, the masks that we wear, um, we would all love to be able to go back to the day where we only wore masks in surgery and when we did sterile procedures. But um, that is one of the things that has helped us keep us um, well and, and safe. And I, I don't know if it's... Um, because the general public, you know, we go outside. Somebody said this last week. When you go outside, the sun's shining, there's cars, people are out and about, people are at restaurants, the kids are in school, and it looks normal. But when you walk into the hospital, it's, it's not normal anymore. And um, it's quieter, and it's not quieter because we have less patients. It's quieter because we have so many patients that can't breathe or can't talk because they're intubated, can't breathe because they have on BiPAP mask, or can't talk because they have on BiPAP mask or, or on vapotherm. Um, and it's just a much more somber environment than I've ever seen in 26 years. We have patients that may be on bed search and they start to deteriorate and have to move to either the COVID unit or CCU. Can you talk a little bit about when that happens um, and what's done in each area of the hospital for a COVID patient based on their severity? Anytime they reach, for us, it's usually anything over 15 liters. Generally, we try to send them down to the PCU, which is the COVID unit at this time. Um, number one, because they're aerosolizing onto the floor which can put other people at risk, and so that they can receive continuous oxygen monitoring out at the desk so that they can have closer monitoring and just better care. As the, as the patient gets sicker, the, the care that they require is more demanding, more intense. They need further um, assessment. They need closer monitoring. They need, um, more interaction because as they become as they get to the point where they start to deteriorate they can deteriorate very fast so if you are not in an area in which you are prepared for that deterioration or you can monitor them closely you could have a negative a negative outcome so as the patients start to get worse that's when they start to look at transferring to a different area in the hospital